thought I was finished with this combat cycle, but uh, after having it critiqued one last time uh, last week, it really needs another revision. And the primary critique with it was, uh, look in this side view here particularly, uh, at the spine. There's not a lot of offset to the spine. It doesn't feel like, you know, separate pieces at all. It feels like just one giant block that's moving all at once. So that needed to be taken care of. So I'll put up here what we just saw, last week's version, and what I've done differently is on the right here for the final version. And probably the biggest problem was the the one on the left doesn't really feel like he's breathing. It just feels like he's, you know, kind of pulling on the ax and moving his body and stuff. The second one on the right I think feels a little bit more like what it should, like he's breathing, like it's an idol. And beyond that, we can take a look at a couple of other things. Uh, one thing is I had this, uh, this hand here, you know, kind of moved over here and then moved back this way. And in another spot, I had this foot kind of shuffle over here and then shuffle back. You know, I think I did the same thing here with this rear foot. Um, but I did that all within one cycle. And what I've got going on here is five cycles total. So in one of those five cycles, the hand would move over and move back. Well, it was uh, imparted to me <laughs> that one of the advantages of having the cycle copied five times is that, let's say on the right here, is I could move say this hand over readjust on the on the axe handle and then leave it there for a couple of cycles and then move it back so i think it gives it more of a natural feel and really just improves the animation overall now one other thing that um that you might notice is i have this uh, big pound of the axe on the left side which i thought was really cool but it doesn't really have a place in this idol. I think it would work better as its own separate animation, maybe like a taunt animation where he's like, you know, lifts the ax up, slams it to the ground, uh, maybe beats his chest with his right hand sort of thing. How did I get from where I was last week to where I am now? Well, the first thing I had to do was just take a look at uh, one cycle. In this case, it's 60 frames. And you want to make sure that everything is there. And it's okay at this point for everything to be moving at the same time. I've got, you know, the, the cog, the center of gravity, the hips, the middle spine, and the chest. They all have kind of the same, I guess if I uh, select everything here, they all have the same keys at the same time, roughly every 10 frames. But it's important at this point just to make sure that everything is working as a unit. It feels like he's breathing, which was probably the biggest problem I had over the previous version. And so now if we take a look at the same file with things offset, I'll just show the graph editor to kind of represent. You can see now instead of every 10 frames, I've got all kinds of craziness going on. And if I expand the timeline, you can see I've got keys instead of where they were at 60 going all the way up to uh, 69. Basically, I've taken different areas of this uh, animation and offset them. Basically, you're looking to see what is leading and what is following. So I think you can probably tell the difference here in the animation. It no longer feels like this is one solid mass of an upper body. It feels like the middle, the cog, the chest, they're all kind of separate pieces. They're doing the same thing, but they're offset in time. And finally, if we take a look at this uh, finish cycle, now you can see my frame range goes from 0 to 300. And basically what I've done is I've copied that cycle, that 60 frame cycle or 2 second cycle, uh, five times. But one thing that you can do now that, you, now that you're copying your cycles, you have the advantage of being able to vary those cycles. So the first cycle goes from 
uh, 0 to 60. The second cycle might go, you know, 50 frames, and then 55, and then 65, and then 70, you know, just to have a just a little bit of a variance in how long it takes him to breathe in, breathe out. So now I can take these variations that we talked about, the uh, the foot shuffle and, and the hand moving up and down the X, and I can have them happen across cycles. So I think I have this, uh, this hand moves here in the second cycle, and it stays there. And it comes back here like in the fourth cycle probably. So it goes there and then it comes back instead of going there, coming back within its own cycle. And I think I did the same thing with the, uh, with the foot shuffle down here, tried to have it come as his weight was shifting over to the right and then have it return as his weight is shifting back to the left. So why is it important to work this hard on a combat idol? It's important because the idol is going to be the foundation for all of the combat animations to follow. Everything is built on top of this animation. So for example, if we stop this here, uh, I have a blocking pass of an attack. That attack starts in the idle pose. The attack finishes in the idle pose. And so again, everything is based on that combat idle animation. So we'll talk more about this attack animation next week. And until then, take care. <laughs>